from the headquarters of Telesur English in Quito, Ecuador. This is from the South, and I'm Camila Escalante. Venezuela's Attorney General Tarek William Saab has announced that a formal request was sent to Colombia for the extradition of Cleaver Alcala Cordones and others involved in the plot to assassinate President Nicolas Maduro and other Venezuelan government officials. And has already been reported, a criminal investigation has been opened against Juan Guaido, Cleaver Alcala and others involved in this attempted coup. In this regard, the Attorney General's office has issued an arrest warrant for Cleaver Alcala Cordones and Antonio Cerquera Torres. These warrants were approved by the court with jurisdiction over crimes of treason, illicit trafficking of weapons, terrorism, attempted magnicide, and criminal association. The three commanders of the groups, Juvenal Cerquera Torres, Felix Sanguinetti, and Robert Levitt Colina Ibarra, already had valid uh, wa arrest warrants issued against them on March 22nd. The Venezuelan Attorney General also denounced that a group of terrorists is working to create chaos in the country with the support of the governments of the United States and Colombia. But a gang of criminals are plotting to generate violence and death in our territory. They do it with the Colombian government's approval. This must be said. Clever Alcala and his henchmen operate in Colombia with the knowledge of the Colombian government. Clever Alcala said it himself. He admitted he lives peacefully in his home in Barranquilla. Where do you get the money from? Who pays your bills? Who gave you the $50,000 to buy the weapons? Why don't you disclose who these Americans' advisors are? And obviously, why don't you disclose the logistics you have had in Colombia to undertake this conspiracy? He enjoyed and obviously had the guidance and support of the United States. In an interview for Colombia's W Radio, the Minister of Communication, Jorge Rodriguez, denounced that the operation which was being plotted against President Nicolas Maduro. All that happened yesterday was the confirmation of the denouncements that we have been making very recently, like the day before yesterday, Wednesday. We pulled the two sides of the court at the same time to reveal the more than 16 conspiracies which have been staged in Colombia against Venezuela. And if you thoroughly revise the drone assassination attempt against the president of the republic, the head of the military, the wife of the president of the republic, and almost all of the cabinet, the magnicide was designed, planned, financed, and trained in Chinacota, Colombia. And you can see how that July had tens of examples. Venezuela's military has rejected the interventionist actions taken by the United States and destabilizing forces, saying that the Venezuelan military is not a mercenary at the orders of foreign powers and rejecting the extravagant statements made by the U.S. Justice Department. People of Venezuela, we also ratified as well the will to defend this great nation through sacrifice, to return dignity, honor, and respect, which was reached in the struggles for independence. We ratify our will to defend our legitimately constituted president, defend our territory, our people, and all of Venezuelan state, and tirelessly struggle united. Everyone in a civil military alliance to overcome COVID-19 together. We pledge to capture the former soldiers, terrorists, mercenaries, or external forces which seek to put their foot to missiles on the sacred Venezuela ground. We will respond with force and fury with the teachings and historic legacy of father of the homeland, Simón Bolívar. Chávez vive! Independencia y patria socialista! El sol de Venezuela nace en el Esequibo. Leales siempre. Venceremos. President Nicolas Maduro has sent Venezuela's solidarity to the people of the United States, which overtook China as the country with the highest number of coronavirus cases on Thursday. The epicenter of the coronavirus pandemic has turned to the United States, 
and this is very dangerous for Americans, Americans of the North, South Americans, Central Americans, the Caribbean, for all over region because the United States has converted into a menace for the public health of Latin America, the Caribbean and the world. There is no public health system in the United States. It's all privatized. They've militarized cities. They've made war-like movements with armored vehicles, tanks, but they have not made the strides for health appropriate to protect the people of the United States. And look at this. In a short period, the curve is exponential. What it's called the curve. Here is the exponential curve of the United States. Dangerous. Our solidarity and support to the people of the United States. We hope that sooner than later, they achieve the formula to control this pandemic, which is out of control in the United States. The head of the Venezuelan military has ordered that the military industry veer towards the production of goods needed for protection as the country combats COVID-19. I am at the textile center of the army. The entire line production has been shifted to the manufacturing of face masks, of hospital sheets, surgical overalls, in order to supply the necessities not only of the armed forces and the military hospitals, but for all the public hospital network of the Venezuelan state. This is part of the measures we've adopted during the quarantine in order to cut the chain of transmission. There is a variety of production of models. Here is one. This one that I am wearing was manufactured here in this textile center. Here we are working for Venezuela. No one is going to distract us. The U.S. empire, with its nastiness and aggressions, we will remain occupied and saving generations to come to save the life of the Venezuelan people. So together, united, we will win. Trinidad and Tobago has now recorded 66 confirmed COVID-19 cases with two deaths. The number of samples submitted to CARFA for testing as of March 27, 2020 is 453. Number of samples which have tested positive, 66. It must be noted out of that 66, 47 came from one source, which unfortunately was that cruise ship. Um, and the passengers came in here in two batches, an initial uh, small batch of about three or four people, and then the 68 people who were then quarantined at uh, Balandra. So 47 of the 66 came from one source, which means out of that we have 19 cases. I give you this statistic not to blame anything or blame anybody, but the fact is that should give us some degree of comfort in that our risk of community spread is lower coming out of those 19 cases versus the entire 66 cases. Barbados now has 24 confirmed cases of the COVID-19 virus after more than 200 people were tested over the past three weeks. Over the last two days, we've diagnosed three additional persons each day, bringing the total to 24 cases of COVID-19 in Barbados. And this is out of a total of 207 tests that we've conducted over the past three weeks. 13 of those cases are women and 11 of those cases are males. 13 of the cases are also imported, with the majority of those imported cases being persons of Barbadian, um, who are Barbadian, my apologies. 10 of those cases were diagnosed through contact tracing, and one is still under investigation. All 24 cases are in isolation facilities at this point. Antigua and Barbuda has at least seven confirmed cases of the COVID-19 virus. Prime Minister Gaston Brown, in an address to the nation, has said that the country's borders will be closed to international flights as a result. We had our first confirmed case two weeks ago. Subsequently, two additional cases last week. And unfortunately, today, four new cases. This has brought the total to seven. To date, the evidence is all but one of the cases were imported to include a returning national who contracted it from abroad. All seven individuals are now in isolation and the necessary contract tracing is being done. We have decided to close our borders 
effective from midnight tonight to all international flights from North America and Europe where the virus is spiraling out of control. The only exceptions to this closure are Liet and other small sub-regional flights, which now are only moving between limited places within the region and to private aircraft and cargo planes. The latest from Brazil, Ecuador, and more when we return. Join us again in a minute. Who's moving the chess man? What interests and motivate the actors behind each event? The board is deployed there. Critical move. Investigates every event from Monday to Friday. Only on the Sur. number of confirmed COVID-19 cases have climbed to more than 1,600, as our correspondent Denise Herrera reports. In a virtual press conference, the Ecuadorian authorities reported that Ecuador has 1,595 cases of coronavirus and 36 deaths. But now, Ecuadorian citizens mailing from Guayas province are denouncing that their relatives are dying in their houses because of the virus and they didn't receive any government aid. At the moment, Ecuador has also three people recover and 1,404 people are in a stable condition on quarantine. In Brazil, Sao Paulo State Governor Joao Doria says he has received death threats. He has received death threats after he rejected President Jair Bolsonaro's request to lift the lockdown put in place to stop the spread of COVID-19. Our correspondent Brian Meir has the details. Two days ago after far-right Brazilian President Jair Bolsonaro made a speech on national television asking governors to end their lockdowns, to reopen schools, to reopen commerce, all 27 governors met in a teleconference and 25 of them decided to ignore the president's request. Last night, President Bolsonaro continued beating away at the theme that the lockdowns will be bad for the economy, that if people go hungry, more people will die than from the coronavirus, we, which he continues to insist is just a little cold. And he inaugurated a new television advertising campaign financed by the federal government, asking citizens to go out onto the streets to go back to work. Now, after this happened, the fighting between the governors and the president increased. The governor of Santa Catarina, which is a popular tourist state, announced that he's lifting the quarantine orders on Monday. And after a heated exchange between Sao Paulo Governor João Doria and the president, Doria received death threats. He received threats of, from people saying they were going to invade his house and kill him. So he ordered an extra police guard around his building, and he's filed a, a police report, and he's accusing these threats from coming from a hate network that's coordinated by President Jair Bolsonaro's son, Carlos. Canada is rejecting a proposal by the United States to deploy hundreds of troops along the border as a response to the COVID-19 pandemic. Our correspondent, Pablo Vivanco, has the latest on this development from Toronto. Canada has said that it is strongly opposed to the possibility of U.S. troops along the border as a response to the COVID-19 crisis. Uh, reports say that the White House is considering a plan that could put up to 1,000 U.S. troops within 25 kilometers of the 9,000-kilometer border uh, in order so that they can look for illegal border crossers. Uh, Deputy Prime Minister Christian Friedland said the move is unnecessary and could severely damage relations between two countries. However, 
re uh, report uh, on late Thursday from the Wall Street Journal said that Trump may be looking to ditch the proposal. Um, people here in Canada are generally staying home, uh, although no official quarantine or curfew has uh, been declared. Some provinces have declared uh, a state of emergencies, and the response across the country has varied precisely because of the fact that it's the provinces for the most part that are responsible for the uh, responses, uh, testing, and all the other things that we're seeing across the world. Uh, however, almost one million Canadians applied for unemployment assurance last week alone, and Prime Minister Justin Trudeau continues to be on lockdown after his wife tested positive uh, for COVID-19 around two weeks ago. Uh, Canada has uh, in and around 2,000 confirmed cases so far. Uh, this report about U.S. troops comes as uh, U.S. surpassed China in total number of confirmed coronavirus cases uh, and as well on the same day as Canada named a new ambassador to Washington. The latest from hard hit, hard hit Europe when we come back. Join us again after this. From here to beyond the south, from here to the Caribbean or further north, where can I see news connecting the whole south? From Washington, from Mexico, from Caracas, from Quito, from Havana. You can always see the news of from a new vision, connecting the global south. Only on Welcome back. Welcome back. As the COVID-19 pandemic rages on with 500,000 people infected across the globe, the World Health Organization is offering a ray of hope. WHO Director General Tedros says a solidarity trial will soon begin in Spain and Norway that will see drug combinations tested in an effort to find a vaccine. Today, we're delighted to announce that today in Norway and Spain, the first patients will shortly be enrolled in the solidarity trial, which will compare the safety and effectiveness of, our, of four different drugs or drug combinations against COVID-19. This is a historic trial, which will dramatically cut the time needed to generate robust evidence about what drugs work. More than 45 countries are contributing to the trial, and more have expressed interest. The more countries who join the trial, the faster we will have the results. France has extended its national lockdown until April 15th after reporting 365 COVID-19 deaths on Thursday, its biggest daily toll from the virus. Aujourd'hui. I am announcing today the renewal of the containment period for an additional two weeks, starting next week, Tuesday, until Wednesday, April 15. The same rules that currently apply will continue to apply. This period may, of course, be extended if the health situation so requires. Italian authorities have announced 969 COVID-19 deaths, dashing hopes that the epidemic in Europe's worst-hit country was easing after more encouraging numbers in the previous days. The people here have increased by 589 units, and now they are a total of 10,950. Unfortunately, the people who have died are 96,950 of them are from yesterday's count because we didn't count incorrectly one region. The total of citizens who are now positive to the virus are 66,414. 
UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson tested positive for COVID-19 early today. He made the revelation in a video posted to Twitter. So I want to bring you up to speed with something that's happening today, which is that I've developed mild symptoms of the coronavirus, that's to say a temperature and a, a persistent cough. And on the advice of the chief medical officer, I've taken a test that has come out positive. So I am working from home. I'm self-isolating. And that's entirely the right thing to do. Uh, but be in no doubt that I can continue, uh, thanks to the wizardry of modern technology, to communicate with all my top team to lead the national fight back against coronavirus. And shortly after Johnson's announcement, Secretary, Health Secretary Matt Hancock also revealed that he has tested po positive for COVID-19. In a video message posted on his Twitter account, Hancock said that he had already been working from home for the last couple of days and would now be self-isolating until next Thursday. I've been working from home over the last couple of days because everybody who can work from home should work from home. I've also had some mild symptoms of coronavirus uh, and upon medical advice, I was tested and that test has been positive. So I'll be self-isolating here until next Thursday. Our correspondent Owen Connor Doherty has more on Boris Johnson's recent announcement as well as the UK's response to the crisis. The British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced that he has contracted the COVID-19 virus and is displaying mild symptoms. He's going to be self-isolating in number 10 Downing Street and in doing so joins the ranks of a number of Global North leaders who are trying to do their job from behind closed doors. That's a list that includes Germany's Angela Merkel, Canada's Justin Trudeau and Catalonia's Kim Toro. Now here in the United Kingdom, the government's response to this crisis as we go into the weekend is still drawing criticism. One concern is the lack of support for the most economically vulnerable during this period. That's a group that includes those who rent their homes and the self-employed. Now, the government has announced measures to alleviate the pressure on these groups. However, they come with caveats. So the government has said that no evictions will take place during this time, but landlords are going to be working out a repayment schedule with their tenants. And the government is effectively relying on the compassion of landlords to do this. Another concern for the self-employed is that they will have to wait until June in order to receive any financial assistance. One major problem here in the United Kingdom is the lack of support for healthcare staff. Now there is a shortage of personal protective equipment and COVID-19 testing kits here. Now this is not surprising given the decade of Conservative Party led austerity in this country. However, what is galling is hearing that same party issue declarations of support for public health after years of savaging it. Spain's COVID-19 death toll has soared past 4,800 after 769 people succumbed to the illness in 24 hours. The European country has had the world's second highest death toll following Italy and so far there are 64,059 patients infected with the virus. We have 64,059 cases in total, after registering 7,871 new cases. It's a 14% increase. We've recorded 4,858 deaths, while we've discharged 9,357 patients. We still have a lot to do, but we believe that based on the numbers, little by little, we are nearing our peak of COVID-19 cases. Now to Benin, where Friends of Venezuela and the ALBA Association are demanding the cessation of the criminal blockade on Venezuela. Hello comrades, we the ALBA and Friends of Venezuela Association are asking President Donald Trump in this difficult time of the COVID-19 to lift the sanctions and the blockade against Venezuela as the people could benefit of international assistance in order to fight against COVID-19. Done with the savage blockade against Venezuela. Long live Maduro, long live Benin, homeland or death, we will win. Guinea's Electoral Commission says voters have overwhelmingly approved a new constitution that opposition parties say will allow President Alfa Conde to extend his stay in office. 
According to Amadou Salif Kebe, head of the country's electoral body, 92% of voters voted in favor of the legislative changes. The new constitution changes the presidential term limit from five to six years, renewable once. It also gives the president power to appoint the Speaker of Parliament. Distribution of votes. 2,856,091.6% or 91.6 percent voted yes, while 262,000 or 8.41% voted no. Totals, 3,118,860. Millions of voters in Mali will this weekend head to the polls to elect new parliamentarians despite the COVID-19 pandemic and the abduction of an opposition leader. The parliamentary election has been delayed several times since 2018, mostly over security concerns. But Mali's government says that the poll will go ahead on Sunday, even as the novel coronavirus has added to the country's chronic security problems. On Wednesday, unidentified gunmen abducted leading opposition figure Sumaila Sisse, killing his bodyguard in the process. And we've come to the end of this news brief. You can find these and many other stories on our website at tellusyourenglish.net. And join us on social media. We're on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For Tell Us Your English, I'm Camila Escalante. Thanks for watching. Hola, ¿qué tal? Sean todos muy bienvenidos a Vida. Hay lugares donde el arte se unifica con el orgullo. De...